We're on your side with tonight's cover story. Reports of sexual assaults connected to Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. The headline all too familiar. Less than one month ago, a concerned parent called WBTV after her five year old daughter said two boys punched her, kicked her and inappropriately touched her on a school bus. The girl's report was relayed to school administrators and police the next day. But the girl's mother told our chief investigative reporter Nick Oxner the school did nothing. So they give you this packet of all the things that they say they're going to do mm -hmm. to make sure she feels safe at school. Yes. Did any of that happen? No, it did not. The very next day she went to school, the bus driver set her directly next to the little boy. That incident involves students from Croft Community School. Now tonight, another mother says her five year old was sexually assaulted at a school bus stop going to another school in the district, Greer Academy. You see the map here of where that is. She says she got a call, the assistant principal at Greer Academy, saying a boy had looked up her daughter's skirt and touched her. Nick also sat down with this mother. Here's some of his report from 6 o'clock. My daughter comes home every day and she's still not comfortable. The incident happened February 23rd, reported the same day. This mother says the assistant principal at Greer Academy called her that afternoon. But that's it. Nothing else happened. Police weren't called. A Title IX report wasn't filed. Her daughter still had to see the boy. He sits two seats behind them. My daughter told me they still cross paths. She asked the assistant principal if the boy could be removed from the bus. And it was basically saying like, oh, it'll be a whole process, you know, blah, 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 and it's not guaranteed it was gonna happen. I was like, you know what, okay, cool. And then that's when we reached out to you guys. I called Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools to get answers. That same day, administrators at Greer Academy reached out to the mother for a meeting. That meeting led to this paperwork, outlining steps the school would take to make the little girl feel comfortable at school, including counseling. But both kids would still be on the same bus. That's all I want. What's so hard to take this boy off the bus? Mm, you hear the mother there. Our chief investigative reporter Nick Oxner joins us here in studio to talk more about this. You've done so much reporting on this. You just had the case that we talked about last week. I think people at home are probably thinking to themselves, wait, is, is the message not getting down to principles about how you're supposed to handle these kinds of things? That is a great question, Jamie, and let's start with what we know we have heard from the interim superintendent, Dr. Crystal Hill, who in January mm -hmm. said at a press conference in response to my questions, we have trained all of our administrators to know how to handle this properly. So either what she said in January mm -hmm. wasn't correct, I don't know why she would misspeak about sure. that, or the principals didn't pay attention. Either way, the second one was reported February 23rd. We were already reporting about the first case right. of the first five-year-old at that point. It was already in the news and it was still handled or mishandled the way it was. Uh, so frustrating, certainly. Is CMS saying anything about this latest case? They're literally saying nothing, absolutely nothing. I got um, I got words back from a spokesman for CMS that said mm -hmm. they would not issue a comment and then they ignored a follow-up email I sent. But let's be very clear about this, mm -hmm. Jamie. We will ask our questions of CMS board members and again of Dr. Hill, the interim superintendent, at their board meeting this coming Tuesday. Now, a lot of this again goes back to Title IX, right? The federal mm -hmm. law. How are school districts supposed to handle that in these kinds of situations, given the law? I know we've talked about this a lot lately, but it bears repeating, it it, yeah. especially for the uh, principals and assistant principals within Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. Um, what you are supposed to do immediately is take what's called supportive measures. That's the thing you saw on that sheet of paper that we just put up on the screen mm -hmm. here. But you need to do that as soon as you get this report. In Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, you're supposed to file a report and alert the Title IX office. Remember, they've expanded their staff for Title IX from two staffers to 11 staffers, so they can start that process. And you're supposed to call police. In this most recent report, the administrators at Greer Academy did exactly zero mm -hmm. of that until I called on Friday. And again, if Title IX is not followed, what happens? Well, in theory, you could have a civil claim, a lawsuit that you could file against the school or the Department of Education could come in and they could investigate. That could happen. It has happened previously. The, the Department of Education, U.S. Department of Education, has found the district previously did not follow Title IX. It really makes you wonder whether they're going to take some additional action here. Uh, again, we keep kind of asking the same questions over and over because these cases keep happening with the same results. Parents keep calling us. Yeah. Administrators at every level and leaders of Charlotte Mecklenburg schools are not following the law. That's why we keep getting these calls and we're going to keep yeah. asking those questions. Uh, we certainly know you will. Nick, appreciate you coming by and walking us through this latest case. And if you're not caught up on all of Nick's reporting, you can find all of his coverage on CMS sexual assaults on WBTV.com 
slash investigates.